Hello. Good morning, guys. Can you can you hear me at all? Can you see me? Let me know and we get started. All right, I think we're live. Great. Good morning, Senfer. 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 Don't know how to pronounce that. JC, how you going? All right, just um, a couple more minutes. See if someone else um, joins us before we, before I show you what um, I have for you today. So just wanted to show you what we did in the last stream in case you you missed that one. Also because I want to show you how um, how this stream is going to go down. Let's have a look. All right, so this is the. Let's see if I am showing you the right screen. Yep. Cool. So this is the. This is the guy that we worked in the previous two streams. Uh, so we did a, a session on CBrush 2019 in between the blocking stage of this guy and the kind of like the finished or the polished pass where we added the the final bits of the beer and the and the hat and some extra details here. So that one was kind of fun, but a bit random. It was more like about sculpting and there were a few bits that you know were kind of boring to watch. So um, we're not going to do anything like this in this one. Instead, we're going to do to com something completely different, but I think you guys are going to like it as I'm going to show you some Siri Mesh 3 tips and you know a few things from Siri 2019. Uh, we're going to take advantage of the new edition of, of 2019 and create something very interesting. So I'm going to again try to get out of my comfort zone and work on a hard surface model. But I'll show you I'll show you um what I mean. All right, let's see. Good morning, guys. Good morning, Arc Pires. How are you, Pablo? Hi from Brazil. Bon dia. Johnny Riguto. Good morning. All right. So, all right, I think we can get started today before um, I start to branch out and talk about something completely unrelated, which I tend to do. All right, so let me show you what I think I want to be doing in this stream. Uh, I'm going to try to block out something today, and hopefully in the next one we can do a bit more of the, or get a bit deeper into retopology and that type of thing for like hard surface modeling. So I have on, I don't know if you can see it here on the stream. Oh yes, you can, but too tiny. So I have uh, some reference photos here on the on my monitor. Let me just show you what I have here. So I'm using pure ref. Yeah, and this is the the idea that I have uh, for like a. I mean, I'm I'm gonna use this Jackal 300 and Jackal 1000 um, as a kind of like as a reference to. I think it it looks really cool, but as a reference for creating a kind of like a sci-fi hard surface device of, of some sort. Um, so I'm gonna use this as a reference. I have a few other ones that I think they're pretty cool, like the Panasonic. And you know this this Walkman. I think it is a Walkman. Uh, yeah, this Walkman too. There you go. <laughs> and then we have these other two. And these ones are just really cool because um, this is the like the radio that my dad to this day still uses to listen to radio in the mornings. So it's a it's a pretty sturdy piece and pretty cool. Um, anyway, so I'm gonna be using some of these to create something similar. I'm not gonna go straight uh, like 100% for this style or not the style. Sorry, they the exact same details, but I'm gonna I'm gonna draw from these references and you know get all these dials and try to get all the interesting pieces together, and, but make my own version of this sci-fi, like my own vision of this sci-fi device. So hopefully, hopefully that's gonna be interesting for you guys. We're gonna definitely deal with some hard surface stuff, um, you know, booleans for these type of areas right here. All of these could be you know part of the booleans, repetitive patterns. Uh, we're going to create those holes. 
um, but you know we're going to try to keep it simple and then we're going to work on retopology for this for these details here we can use uh, a, a completely different technique also using booleans but something that I found to be quite interesting using the uh, nano mesh technique as well so a few different things that we can work on so let's go ahead and and start with that hopefully you guys are gonna like that um, that process and just to show you a bit of the workflow on some of those things I've done things in the past let me just show you one second So if you go to the ZBrush guys, there's a, a couple of, of a, a couple of tutorials really, um, and tutorial series that you might find useful, and they're just basically about this type of sci-fi elements that I like to do. So let me just show you. So if you go to a thing that's into intro series, there we go. So this one is just um. It's kind of like an introduction to the booleans. So when booleans was um, first released in 4R8, I did this, it's a, I think, 10 video introduction of how to use booleans to create a um, sci-fi object. So here's the sketch here, some of the parts that I use, and you take something like this with all the green, all the green bits are kind of like subtracting and, and intersecting objects and things like that to create this type of object. So it's quite fun. Uh, you can just go ahead and watch that if you want. Um, but the idea is to do something like that, kind of like an upgrade or an update to this training, but just in the in the live stream, so that we can take advantage of the new stuff from Sirush. And these are some of the stuff very similar to what I just showed you in terms of reference that I've done for uh, for R8. So relatively simple, you know, they're just cubes and subtractions and that type of thing. But these ones are just boolean, so I haven't done any retopology and the, the renders are from Keyshot. Same thing as this, you know, super silly, but, you know, it, it has, it works as, a, as an exercise, I guess, that's, that's also why I do it. But it's very simple, very, very straightforward topology. So I'm gonna try to do something a little bit more intricate, with some more intricate details, and then take advantage of the Siri Measure 3 and all those sort of things to, you know, produce something more interesting that hopefully we can also UV and maybe texture later on. So that is the idea. All right. And if you guys have any questions during or while I'm working on a specific workflow, just let me know. And yeah, I'll be looking at the chat, like like I've said before in previous um, streams, and I'll just try to answer if I know the answer. All right. So let's go ahead and get started. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to start with the simple forms or the simple geometric um, shapes to block out the, the initial shape. So I'm going to turn this, this is just a sim simple sphere. I'm going to turn that into a Q cube or quick cube. I'm going to change the material and go into polyframe or enable polyframe. All right, so with the Gizmo 3D, this is probably the easiest way to go about it. I'm just going to scale this up a bit. Um, and I think I'm going to turn floor off and I'm going to go ahead and scale this up like so. And this is the one, like, this is the main body of this device. So I'm just going to play around with the shape with something that kind of looks similar to the to the Jackal 1000. It's not exactly a cube, but it's a bit more squashed. All right. So that is good as a, as a starting point. <laughs> nothing, nothing too complex. But what I'm going to do now is duplicate uh, some of these elements and, you know, generate some of the the main shapes, like blocking out these at this stage. So let's go ahead and duplicate these, and we can maybe move it on the side, scale it down. Let's try to make this this edge around a little bit consistent, well, or more consistent than than that. All right. So this is going to be just the border in here. Again, nothing too too complicated, nothing too fancy. But before I duplicate it to the other side, uh, I want to go ahead and do a bit of beveling and just create kind of like this 
this slope here. So to do that, it's again very easy. We can go ahead and use make use of the C modeler. And I have a macro here that automatically selects the the C modeler and enables the poly frame and all that, but I already had it, so not a big deal. I'm gonna hold the Alt key and just tag these these faces, right click over them, and I'm gonna select the masking or the masking action, and I'm gonna target all polygroup all. So I'm gonna click on that and Zero is gonna mask just that area. So I can now invert that, bring in my Gizmo 3D and center that to the unmask areas, like so. And we can use these to, you know, scale that bit. You can also use the C modeler to do this. I just found that this one gives me more flexibility and more freedom to, to play around with the shape. So I don't want that much of a bevel. All right, so maybe, maybe something like that. That looks all right. Let's go ahead and clear that mask and we can reposition this a little bit better. So you wanna have a tiny little gap here before the this kind of diagonal line goes down. All right, so that is kind of like the the basic part of it. Uh, I'm gonna duplicate this, or duplicate this um, side, and I'm gonna mirror it to the other side. Cool. So very very basic, but very you know very easy to block out these um, this, these initial shapes. And then we're gonna start adding a little bit more complexity to it and maybe some already some um, some of the cylinders that could that could create the holes in this. Uh, but I think it's looking good. So before I do any any of the the booleans or start working with the uh, snapshot 3D, which is ideal for these type of things, I wanna prepare or organize things now that we have the folders so that we can work with the boolean folder and that type of thing, um, all within the same tool. So let's do a quick save. Um, Paul Livian, can you put some of your reference in the screen so we can see uh, what you're trying to do, replicate? Uh, sure. Yeah, um, the, the only thing is I have the chat in as an overlay on the stream as well as the camera, so I wouldn't have too much uh, space to work with I can show you again, or every now and again, so that you remember. So this is these are the references. So again, for the for this type of um, basic shape or the the blockout, I'm just trying to follow this this rectangular shape, and and the the sides are kind of like these extra bits before I get into anything else. But that is that is pretty much it. So if you wanna see some the reference that I'm using, you can just Google Jackal or Sony Jackal 1000 or 300. Uh, but it's, it's just a, let's see. Yeah, it's just a little bit hard to keep them and have enough space to, to work. But I have them on the other side. If you wanna see them, maybe when I, when I start to work on specific areas, I'll just show you which one I'm working on. So for now, I'm just doing the block out to have an idea of where I want to place things. So like I said, I want to organize things now that we have the folders. So I'm going to select the base and I'm going to create a new folder and I'm going to call this uh, body. Right. Uh, then I'm going to select the, I think this is the left side. Let's go into solo mode. Yep. So let's call this the right hand side of the, of the device. So new folder, our side, so right side, and the third one, let's go ahead and call this L side. Great. So now we have three folders with one piece in each folder. But what's good about it is that any Boolean operation or anything that we want to do to the specific or to, yeah, to each one of these pieces uh, could be all within each one of these folders and then we can boolean the entire folder to see um, how everything is looking. All right, so let's go ahead and continue with this. I'm gonna select the body and I think I'm gonna, 
Mm. So let me let me bring the. Hang on a second. Let me bring in these references. So here is part of the planning that uh, we have to do. So for the front, I mean all of these. All of these edges, all of that can be done um, later on. We can just divide it and use polygrouping to use edge loops, um, not edge loops, sorry, um, poly loops. Poly loops, am I, am I saying the right thing? Edge loops, poly loops. I forgot the name. Jesus. Hang on a second, I know where it is. Panel loops, that's what I meant. <laughs> Okay, so yeah, so what I was saying is that the planning of these, um, it doesn't have to be anything complicated, but for example, this kind of extrusion here in the front, that is probably something that is better to do as an extra object, since the, the edge between the base and this extrusion is quite sharp, we don't have to have it connected. Uh, then we can just, you know, retopologize everything together, but I think this one would work best as a single object, and we can use these these dials and these holes um, as or the the boolean operation to create these holes, uh, but they won't affect the main body. So let's go ahead and do that that part. So the oops, sorry about that. I think I just moved the 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 screen in the stream. Alright, so let's go ahead and duplicate that object. So I'm going to duplicate and I'm going to uh, move it out of the of the folder. I, th I think that's one of the great, great, greatest things about the new addition is that you can just drag and drop different um, subtools. It's pretty pretty handy. Uh, I'm going to create an a new folder for this and let's call it uh, front panel. Cool. So this front panel right now is the same size. Let's go ahead and turn polyframe, bring in the gizmo 3D, scale it down and move it forward. And with this, we can go ahead and start playing around with the shape. So it's gonna be a bit, again, I'm gonna use this as a reference, but it's not gonna be exactly the same thing. I just like the, the proportions of, of some of these details. So I'm gonna leave this uh, in the center, like that. But of course, it's gonna be quite, quite small, like that. All right, so I want to stick out maybe a little bit more than the reference. You know, we, we have more more room to play around with uh, different shapes here. Great, so now we can go ahead and use booleans, for example, to cut these corners here. But to be honest, the easiest way to do it is just um, with C-Modeler at this stage because it's such an easy thing to do that um, I don't want to complicate the geometry just yet. So let's keep doing the blocking um, for kind of like adding a bevel to this area. So let's go ahead and do that. I'm going to go into solo mode now. And instead of just using the bevel from from the C model at this point, what I want to do is enable symmetry. So now we can work in both sides. And I'm going to add a couple of edge loop. So I'm going to click. Uh, by default, I think I should have it. So let me just right click on the edge. Yeah, default is insert a single edge loop. So I'm going to click and drag. All right, something like that. And then we can go ahead and hold control, mask these bits, invert the mask, bring in the gizmo, center that, and we can scale that down. So this is a quick way to do this type of beveling. Let's bring everything together so we can see how everything is working. And one thing that I want to do, just let me just clear that mask. Um, this is something that, I mean, you don't have to do or anything like that. I just like to, in certain areas, I like to keep consistent kind of like angles. So this angle here at the top, I want it to be similar to this. So something really, really stupid, but really handy sometimes would be to just duplicate a, anything that looks like a square piece. So I can, let's duplicate that one. 
and I'm going to bring in the gizmo center that get out of symmetry this is just that dummy piece I'm going to try to rotate it and place it in the, the same angle this is kind of like a, like a measuring tool alright and then we can bring in the, the gizmo closer to this edge and we can plan this a bit better all right, so I'm gonna leave it there. Again, this is this is a bit stupid, but um, it's not ideal, but it's, it's it works. So let's go ahead and select the the piece again. I'm gonna hold Control, select those areas, invert the mask, bring in the gizmo, and now we can use the gizmo on this side to sort of. You'll see that I can just try to follow this angle that I know is the same as the one at the top. So again, this is rough. Not a not an ideal version of um, how you should do kind of like a more controlled angles, but it works. So I'm happy with that. Let's go ahead and delete that dummy file or that dummy subtool. And I think this is looking pretty good. Now let's go ahead and maybe add some beveling to this so that it's not as hard. And I'm going to show you a, a cool technique later on uh, using the bevel within the crease panel. But for this one, because it is a consistent that we have this edge loop here, we can try the bevel from from the C modeler. So let's go ahead and select bevel, and I'm gonna click on this and just you know what? I don't want too much. I just want a tiny bit. All right, so something like that. Let's go ahead and maybe create another edge loop here in the middle. So I'm gonna click an edge. Oops. First, let's go ahead and select insert again. I'm going to place it there. Um, and I want to make it a tiny bit more, more rounded. So if I look at it from the side, it's very sharp. So one thing we can do um, at this point, because of the, the shape that we have, is just scale it. So in order to select this, we can use the masking brushes or we can use the, the mask from the Simodra, which I think is better in this case. So I'm going to right click. And let's go ahead and select the mask. Um, action and I'm going to select edge loop edge loop complete and I'm going to click on this so now ZBrush mask the entire edge loop because you know there is continuity in this case let's invert the masking bring in the gizmo center that and we can scale it up a bit just a tiny bit and move it maybe four a bit clear that mask and there we go. So we have now a tiny little bit of bevel, but it works, right? If you want to check the beveling, um, I have a few materials here. Uh, maybe the plastic, this plastic blue or the basic material is also a good one. So the, the basic one, you should have it, um, but it, it has a more concentrated specular. So when you rotate the model, you can see this bevel a little bit more. Um, of course, we can make this way smoother than what it looks right now. And we can simply do that by enabling dynamic so right now it is too much but I can just use the Q grid and you get a, a, a more a nicer beveling and then we can play with the coverage change the beveling and the constant no let's leave it bevel and let's leave constant constant off and we can create this type of effect All right, so that is just with the dynamic which for you guys uh, let me just turn this off for you guys the dynamic tools would be on the geometry dynamic subdivision just below the divide button so this is the these are all the tools that i have in my custom ui uh, which oh i just realized that you guys cannot see it because of the camera so um all i did was from this panel i just clicked on dynamic and that's what it gives me and then we have bevel we have chamfer we have constant so you can just enable dynamic to see a little bit of the subdivision of this or how this uh, model will look with um, dynamic subdivision then we can go ahead and turn bevel to add beveling and with the constant off we can change the coverage to do this type of things sorry I totally forgot that you guys cannot see these buttons here at the bottom so I'm gonna be I'm gonna try to be a bit more conscious about it also I think I moved the entire the entire give me one second I'm gonna try to move this up now 
All right. So I think that's it. All right. Not a big deal. So let's go ahead and turn this off. Let's see if you have any questions so far. Take a sip of water. Hey, Ivan, Ivan, Ivan Pixel. Glad you like the zeros, guys. Leaf says, I like how it takes five, six steps to do something you can do in Maya in one step. Um, sure, let's, um, let's just try to do something in response to, to that comment. Um, so, I mean, there are different, different tools, really. So if you like Maya and you're faster with Maya, by all means, but you know, in Maya, it will take you probably more steps to just go ahead and do something like, you know, something that in, in Zeros will take you two steps. You can just duplicate this, go into solo mode, dynamesh it, and bring in the then dumps on the brush and start adding some details. You know, and, that, and this is something that you might not be able to do in Maya as quick. So it depends on the on the on the tools that you use, right? And depending on the on the workflow, I'm just trying also to do extra steps just to show you the the different workflow. But but by all means, if if Maya is your tool, stick with it. I prefer ZBrush. <laughs> Maya is uh is something that I only use if I have to, and you know, depending on the on the studio or whatever I'm I'm, I'm working with. All right. So where were we? Um, let's go ahead and do some, let's bring in my references. Cool. So we can start do, doing something a little bit more interesting than just the, you know, boxes with Simodra. Let's go ahead and start with the, with the side here. I'm going to do this, this pattern and that should be pretty straightforward. We can use array mesh if we want to keep it simple or we can also use just the, the gizmo 3d so let's go ahead and do that um, let's see if I'm just missing maybe a, a bigger shape that we can do before we, we move into the booleans but I think no I think it's I think it's fair to say that these are kind of like the the main shapes before we move into the the details so as you can see it's very very simple so I'm going to do this type of um, this, this paneling effect, this grid. Um, so let's go ahead and do that. So I'll bring in, um, let's just, um, I'm just thinking, maybe a cylinder would be good. So in the right hand side, so this one, this panel, I'm just gonna bring in a cylinder. All right, so I just appended a cylinder Let's rotate that using the Gizmo 3D. Go into solo mode. Maybe turn on polyframe. There we go. And here we're, we're going to just mask an area, like so. Bring in the Gizmo and hold con holding control, we can just push this out of the unmask area. So this one, let's go ahead and clear that mask. Bring in the Gizmo, center it. Uh, this is going to be kind of like the base for that that panel. So let's go into solo mode or get out of solo mode and scale this down. And let's move this in place. So I'm gonna scale this down quite a bit. Uh, we can we can click on this um, house icon and that will center it right in the center of the world. And we can just push it out so that we know exactly that now sits this thing now sits right in the middle. We can push this this way. And we can now go ahead and mask one area. Oops. Bring in the gizmo and then just push this one back a bit, not too much. Something like that. Invert the masking and push this other side. Kind of something like that. I mean it's not too it's not too obvious, not too much. Alright, let's clear that and let's go ahead and play around with this. A bit more so let's go into solo mode and we definitely don't need that many that many loops so we can go ahead and bring in the c modeler right click 
on an edge and I'm gonna delete let's go ahead and delete a edge loop complete so I'm gonna delete maybe all of them whoops and if we need more if we need more poly loops we can just add more uh, you could have ex skipped this step if you go into the initialize palette before you convert this or append this uh, cylinder and, and do all that before you append it but I think it's I think it works as it is let's go ahead and right click here and what I want to do is insert a, a poly loop right in the middle but because we have by default we have the single edge loop whatever we click is where Zeros is going to add this poly loop so let's undo that not poly loop sorry edge loop I want to right click and instead of using the single edge loop, I'm going to click on multi edge loop. So this one is the one that allows us to create, um, you know, a specified resolution and, and a higher amount of edge loops. So if I click and drag, you create this type of thing. So that's great. But I don't need that many uh, poly loops again. Or you know what? I mean, I'm just going to show you both. But if I just click once, Zbrush is going to, well, in this case, remember what we did in the previous step. So let's just go ahead and do that, right? Um, now if I click once it's just going to remember that and place this edge loop right in the middle and that only happens because I have the multi edge loop so if I just click it will be right in the middle if I click and drag you'll add multiple ones so this is something that you can use and then maybe just bevel it and get it closer to the to the edges so that we can have crisper edges here however because we're gonna probably use booleans to to add this together to the to the base or to the side it might be better to have a few more edge loops and that will help with the with the C modular process or oh, sorry the C remesher process cool so very simple stuff we haven't done anything like groundbreaking at this stage let's get out of solo mode and now we can go ahead and you know place this a little bit closer to the edge and in fact we can also go into solo mode and we can add a bit of bevel as well so click on that. Great. Now at this point, what we can do is just assign an entire poly group to the whole thing. So Control W. That is that's pretty good. Um, also, just thinking ahead because we're going to be probably using a C modular. Sorry, C remesher. So many names. The C remesher for the entire thing. Um, one of the things that we need to consider when we work with C Remesher 3 is the amount of, or yeah, the amount of poly, polygon IDs or polygroups that we have. So Zbrush is going to look at the different polygroups that we have, and it's going to try to maintain the the edge of those where those polygroups meet. So right now we have a single polygroup, and this is just again thinking ahead. We're not going to do it just yet, but we can add, we can start adding some polygroups, right? Um, and because we're, we're going to duplicate this this shape then it makes sense to do it at this point and then duplicate it rather than then doing it one at a time. And so very easily we can just go ahead and bring in the selection tools. I'm going to hide part of this model. So now we can see only this from bit. I'm going to hold Control and W. So that gives it, um, it gives this piece a different polygroup here. And I'm going to do the same thing but just with the front. All right. And let's go ahead and hold Control W a couple of times just to change the color. And there we go. So now we have a single polygroup here, another one for the border or this edge, and another one for the front. And I'm thinking maybe for the back we should do the same thing, although just just in case. Although I don't think you're gonna see it. Because again it's gonna be a boolean and this is gonna be embedded into the to the piece, but just in case. There we go. So pretty simple. Again, nothing too complicated at this point. Let's get out of solo mode. And with the gizmo 3D center that it's gonna push this one in a bit more this is gonna be a subtle a subtle detail or like the the kind of like the the depth of this is gonna be very subtle all right so here's a cool trick that you probably know already but it's you know good to refresh it so I'm gonna hold control click on this arrow and holding control is just gonna allow me to do this type of thing right to just duplicate it on the same sub tool However, if I just select the distance between these two and then without letting go of the click, I let go of control, I can just push this down to duplicate it as many times as I want. 
that's it and then hold control to clear the mask and we can center this and now it, this whole thing is within a single uh, subtool so pretty cool pretty handy and let's go ahead and do the same thing for the other side so uh, first let's go ahead and put this in the right place so this is part of the right hand side panel there we go just keep things organized and this is something I'm, I'm not a very organized person when it comes to just um, creatively create stuff because again I just try to get into the zone and just do this stuff but with the new the new field the new uh, folders in ZBrush I'm, I'm just trying to get into this habit of putting everything within folders and then when I open the project I know where things are especially with these type of things all right let me see if there is any questions so far It depends. Booleans in Zbrush are better. Ah, oh, you guys are think you guys are talking about the the five to six step to do one thing in in Zbrush. Um, sometimes I use edge loop delete loops under the geometry rollout. If you do not feel like using C model to do it. Um, okay, yeah, I know what you mean. So that's yeah. I just I just give me, I don't know, I like the similar because it is a single tool and I can, if I'm not necessarily showcasing the, the workflow and I'm just working by myself, it is a very easy tool that I already know how to use and I have a series of macros that allow me to do it, so it's faster, but yeah, totally. There's many different ways to do anything in Zebras, really. Cool, so we have this. Let's go ahead and duplicate that. I'm gonna simply, let's do a quick save just in case. Uh, I'm gonna duplicate that mesh or this subtool, go into the left side and I'm just going to chuck this uh, here and with this subtool selected I'm going to mirror it. Alright, so now we have it on the other side however this side has that kind of like circular speaker so we're going to have to change this a bit. I'm not going to change it right now because we need to create a speaker first or the the hole for the speaker um, so that we can you know have a look at what how many of these little stripes are we gonna delete all right so let's go ahead and do a couple more of these um, additional let's, let's bring in the references here so we just did this type of thing and this one but we haven't deleted some of the ones in the center so I think now maybe I think we can start using booleans now. There's nothing else that sort of spring to mind. I mean you have these these parts here or these bits at the bottom but I don't know if I if I want to keep them. I want to do something a little bit different. Let's go ahead and do that but I'm just going to make my own version of that. So here on the side let's go ahead and create a cylinder so on the left hand side on the right hand side I'm just gonna append a cylinder again select that go into the gizmo with the polyframe enable I'm just gonna use this to scale it up so that it passes kind of like this edge of the main body uh, but you know what? Let's first make it smaller. Like that. And I'm just going to use kind of like half of it. So maybe something like that looks better. So I want I want the edge of these to kind of like align with the with the edge here. Just just for now. This might change a, a bit because we're going to use some um, dynamics of division as well, but for now I think it looks kind of cool. Alright, so I'm going to leave this one as it is, but I want to scale it down a bit. So, let's go ahead and maybe, let's go ahead and mask out this area. Invert the mask, and we can scale this, mm, maybe not, let's just do it a little bit more. 
something like that, invert the mask, and we can use the gizmo because it is right in the center to scale this down a bit, like so, and then we can use this. All right, so that is not too bad, but it's not great. <laughs> so let's go ahead and scale it. We can just tweak the, the shapes a little bit. Maybe try to align the thickness of this or of this uh, sub tool with the with the height of this here. So this is just kind of like me designing, or trying to think about the design rather than just following a particular reference. All right, so I'm gonna do something like that. I think that looks all right. Let's go ahead and clear that mask, get out of this gizmo, and turn off polyframe. All right, so that looks all right. Um, let's go ahead and do some tweaking of this shape because it's not it's not the greatest placement either. So we can just push this down a bit. And I just want to be a little bit careful with some of the coplanar faces that might be happening here in case that we use a you know booleans to merge all these two together. Yeah. All right. So let's go into solo mode and let's do a bit of tweaking on this shape. And because this is, cent is centered or right in the middle of the of the uh, canvas or the space, we can use symmetry as well. I think. Oh no, this is. Oh, we can use it, but in the z-axis. There we go. So I just changed the the symmetry from x to z, so we can work on these two areas. Or I only have to work on one side, and then zero is gonna change it on the other one. All right, so I'm gonna bring in the polyframe and let's go ahead and right click on the edge, make sure that we have bevel and we can click and create some beveling here. Again, this is just to add a couple of loops. Uh, once we enable dynamics of division, if we wanna use it, this is gonna be way smoother. So if I enable dynamic, you'll see, well, right now it's not too obvious, but it's gonna be a bit smoother. Um, but I haven't played with these ones much just yet. Uh, one Another thing I want to do is create an edge loop here. So before I do that, let's go ahead and add a another bevel here, or another set of edge loops here, and another ones here. There we go. And let's go ahead and right click on the edge, and we can use the insert to create another one. Oh, right now I have the multi edge loops. I just want to create a single edge loop just drag it closer to the edge here, and that's gonna make this area sharper, and maybe another one here. And there's kind of like a, I don't know, a, um, a screw or something that is sticking out from this area, so we can just define it a little bit more. And we can go ahead and select all of these faces, so holding the Alt key, I still have the C modeler selected, there we go. And we can right click on the face, make sure that the Q mesh is selected and polygroup all as well as the target. And we can click and push this down uh, a little bit. All right? we can also click again because this is a different polygroup. So, and we have the polygroup all selected and just push that in. And we can bring in the bevel again and that add a little bit of bevel here. All right, so very quickly we have that. And now, I want to duplicate this to the other side, and, and again, I'm just trying to I'm trying to think ahead for the C modeler or C remesher, and we need to create some polygroups to keep this you know to keep this working a little bit better. So I'm just going to assign an entire polygroup, Control W, and then we're going to use a tool that is really really handy in case you maybe you import some something from Maya, maybe you import something to Maya from Maya into ZBrush or or CAD or, or anything like that. Um, but you have a single polygroup or a single polygon ID. And again, because of Siri Mesha, it's gonna take into account the different polygroups, you might want to, to do this process that I'm gonna show you. And it's really easy. Sometimes it works, sometimes you need to do an extra step to clean up everything. So I'm gonna select my move brush, not the C modeler. And if you go to poly, where is it? Polygroups here. So in this, um, in this menu of polygroups, you have a series of options that allows you to assign polygroups. So the one that I've been using with Control w is the Group Visible. 
which just groups gives a, uh, an entire polygroup to whatever is visible. But then you can use group front. So if you're if you have perspective off and you set the camera to be right in the front, you can click group front, and now you have well, in this case, it didn't work too much because of the angle, but you get the idea. So let me just show you the one that I want to use, which is um, group by normals. So group by normals right now it has a 40 degree, uh, 40 degrees tolerance tolerance angle. So if I just click group by normals, that's going to give us something pretty, if not perfect, pretty decent to get started. And I think that's all I need really. So I didn't have to change anything. If you get um, like a very different different polygon between maybe the top area and the bottom area that has to do as well with the with the tolerance but with a single click let's see let's see if Maya can do that I don't know how to do it in Maya so I wouldn't even dare to to challenge the the Maya connoisseurs but uh, in zero it's just one click and it just gives me all this polygroup which I'm sure you can do it in Maya but again I prefer to do it in here is very quickly and we have all of these different um, all of the different polygroups that allow you to use the C remesher. Very cool. All right. So I think maybe I want to manually add another polygroup right in the middle here because um, I believe it's going to be easier for the C modeler. So Control W here. Just an extra one there. Brilliant. All right. Let's go to the sub tool, get out of solo mode and turn off polyframe, bring in the gizmo, just because I want to check this type of thing. So again, we can go ahead and scale this up. Just a bit. I don't want to have any coplanar issues here. Maybe I just want to, I don't know, push it forward. Um, I don't know if I like this, to be honest. So I'm going to leave it the way it was. And instead, what we can do is use when we start doing the booleans, we add some booleans to this area of the of the base so that we can you know get rid of this coplanar issue here. So let's just keep that in mind. Alrighty, so I think that is looking all right. Actually, let's bring it back closer to the way it was. You know, like there. Cool. So we're spending too much time on this, so I'm gonna just move a little bit faster. Let's go ahead and duplicate this, move it into the left side, and let's go ahead and mirror that. Okay, so now we have it in both sides. And I think we can start doing some booleans. All right, so let's do a quick save. See if you guys have any questions about this workflow. All good. Hey Khalil, how are you going? All right, so let's bring in the references and I can show you what's the next step or what would be the idea for the next step. And as you can see, I uh, have a different set of reference here. So I don't know, I might, I might use this type of speaker instead of this one, I don't know. Oh, I like this kind of, um, I wouldn't even know how to call this like a radar <laughs> for the station. I don't know. Um, I think this one looks a, a little bit more interesting than some of these ones. So I'm just going to use bits and pieces from different references. Um, all right. So what I want to do now with booleans is maybe start working on some of the, some of, some of the front bits. So So let's go ahead and do kind of these, these knobs here and this area, because this is going to be an interesting one to use with booleans. And I'm going to show you a technique uh, or, or a process to avoid coplanar faces in this case. So this might be an interesting one. Mm, yeah, so let's, do, let's start with that and then let's do it bit by bit. Let's not overcomplicate things. All right. So those um, those pieces are going to be in this area. So let's go ahead and select the front bit or the front. Let's collapse those. All right, <clears throat> the front one, and let's go into solo mode. All 
and let's go ahead and bring in probably obviously a cylinder would be the best option at this point uh, but we can use something like the um let's just use the uh, what's the name snapshot 3d so let's go to texture and i'm going to double click or click on this lightbox spotlight and double click on this hard surface great so now we can bring in the spotlight by just or the the control by just clicking z on your keyboard and obviously i'm going to use this circle so click on that just get it out of the way um, in fact i'm just going to duplicate it by clicking on this button here so that i don't mess with the originals you can still recover the originals by just loading the spotlight again but you know i want to have it in in here as well so i'm going to center the the controller to the center of the of this image so that i can snap that right in the middle of this so this is one of the really cool um, additions to the to the spotlight 2d or the new version of the spotlight 2d which is that you can you know snap to the different bounding um, or the corners or the center of the of the actual mesh so i have centered the the entire control to the center of the image and then I can snap that to the center of the mesh. So now I can just do these type of things. So let's go ahead and try to get something closer. So this is a quite prominent, quite big area. All right. So I think that looks all right. Um, and let's go ahead and do a custom alpha so that we can project those details straight away. Maybe it's a little bit too big. All right. So I'm gonna go ahead and duplicate this as it is. So click on this button here and that duplicates another circle. I'm going to do the same thing, click on the center of the control and snap that to the center. And I'm going to do the same thing, but this time I'm just going to snap it again to this uh, center of the image or the, yeah, it doesn't matter, the, the object as well. If you click and press, I mean, if you click anywhere to drag the image and press the shift key, you're going to snap to this, to this axis. So I'm going to do the same thing here and maybe scale it down a bit. So this is going to be for the second part of the second yeah, the other the other bit of this of this um how do you call it? I don't know what it is. It's just like the display, I guess, or how you select the stations in this. I'll just show you in a second. So I'm going to place this a little bit better, play around with the scale. And I think maybe this is this should be aligned right in the top. So I'm going to use this like that and then hold shift what I move so that it snaps to this angle and maybe set it set it around there it's pretty close to the to the edge anyway okay so I think that's um, that's pretty close uh, we can now go ahead and click on this uh, before I click on this union let's go ahead and make make an, a more, an extra thing for this alpha so I'm going to use, um, let's see, let's just use a, a square, a couple of squares. So I'm going to click on this one, duplicate it, bring it closer here. And again, I'm going to center that. And this is the one that I'm going to you know, scale up a bit. And we can use this extend H or extend V to extend it horizontally, H for horizontally and V for vertical. So. Um, one important thing to know, but you probably already know this, but uh, it's important to know where the the center of these of this control is going to be because that's the one that ZBrush is going to use to extend from. So if I push this, let's do it here so you can see a little bit better. If I take the controller and just place it around this corner, it's not going to be as easy to see with this specific alpha because. But anyway, so this is kind of like the pivot that ZBrush is going to use to extend. So it's extending it from that point, as you can see. So just be aware of that. So we're just going to use this to place it around there. So that is working fine. Um, let's go ahead and I just need to use union. You know what? I'm going to move this one here <laughs> again. Um, I'm going to go back one step so that I can do it kind of like in steps and it's more systematic. So I'm going to select this one. And one thing, one problem that I just um, that I just figure is that. All right, so <laughs> let me just take a step back and 
kind of like explain what, what I'm trying to do here and why I think it might be an issue. So the ultimate goal, what I'm trying to do with this Snapshot 3D is create a single alpha, like a custom shape, right? That when you project it, it's gonna Boolean that entire shape into this object that we have. Now, the, the problem right now is that I have this circle with this bounding box. I'm gonna bring in my uh, Epic Pen, which is an awesome tool, and everyone asks what it is every time. So. We haven't had those questions yet. All right. So you can see that this circle, this is the this is the image, but this image has a bounding box here, right? So what I'm trying to do is merge this extra circle to this image. The problem is that this other bounding box, we are only going to be able to um, use the union or project this into this image. Uh, within whatever is within this bounding box, right? So only this area of the circle, of the extra circle, is going to be added to this image. So we need to fix that, and there's a there's a easy way to do it, but we just have to go back a few steps. So let's just take this, move it out of the way, and this one as well. So what I'm going to do now is create a blank image so that we can cover exactly the area that we want, and then we can use the union to project those into this place. So I'm going to duplicate this like so. And we can just center that as well. And I'm going to scale it. Right now I'm just I don't I don't care about the the shape of the of this image. I just want to have this size for the bounding box. Right? So I can just extend it like that. And now we can go to the paint or the intensity. This tools here at the top. I'm going to use intensity to bring it all the way down. So now you see, um, we, with intensity, we make we can making sure that the image is now completely black, and ZBrush is going to interpret anything that is black as transparent. So we essentially use intensity to make this entire image black, and therefore it's transparent. That's it. So now we have a kind of like the bounding box or the kind of like the canvas of this image ready. And now we can go ahead and start creating our custom alpha. So let's click on that again. Move it back in place. And let's click on this uh, union icon. So if I click once without any, any other modifier or anything, I'm just going to click once. Now we can move this away. And now this circle is within this image. All right? So that's great. Let's go ahead and click on the second one. Place it kind of like in the way that we want it to. Let's just try to follow what we did before. Closer to the edge. All right, something like that. And let's click on this union again. Cool. So now these two circles live within this little canvas that we created here. Now bring in that one, the rectangular shape. Just going to go for something like that. Click union. And now this is the shape that we're getting. And finally, I just want to have a a bit more. Let's go ahead and scale this, extend it down and rotate it a bit. Oops. You can hold shift to rotate as well, snap into integer numbers as well. So I'm going to go for something like that. Let me scale it up a bit. All right, so I think that works. Let's go ahead and click union. There we go. So now we have this single image that we can use to project or create the booleans for our mesh. Great. So in order to do that, we can just select that image that we create. Oops, I move it, moved it accidentally, but we can just snap it back to the center. And um, I can hold the Alt key and click on the Snapshot 3D, right? So if I hold Alt and click on Snapshot, Zbrush is going to create um, a Boolean operation straight away. So let's get out of uh, Spotlight with Shift Set. And we're in solo mode, so we can only see the shape. But it's pretty, pretty decent shape, I think. And I like how it has smoothed out some of these areas. You don't, if you don't like how ZBrush automatically smooths out the corners um, in this case, I mean, I don't mind them in this case, but if you want sharper angles, maybe let's give that a, a go. Uh, you can go to the Preferences, and there is a new tab here. Uh, let's see if I remember where it is. I remember correctly. I think it's edit. No. 
Hang on a second. I, I totally forgot. It's part of the. Um, I explained this in the in the in the intro to Cerberus guides 2019. Um, so there should be a dedicated. I'm, I'm completely blank in here right now. Spotlight. There we go. So in the spotlight we have a snapshot smoothing. So this is the, the how much smoothing you're getting, and it's also the snapshot retained corners. So if you okay, I'm just gonna remember these numbers 40 and 75 to get back to these um, settings. But I can just retain corners a little bit more. So I can go almost to 100% and then reduce the smoothing to 10. All right. So let's just leave this one as it is. I'm going to turn it off for the time being so that we can see what it gives us. And we just probably have to reset the sizing again. Bring in the spotlight. I'm going to scale this up a bit again. All right, so now with those settings, again, that I tweak here, they were by default 40 and 75. So now 10 and 100 within the spotlight. I'm going to click Alt and create a snapshot. All right, let's get out of this snapshot. And I'm going to put this one inside here as well. Get into solo mode. All right. So you'll see, because I left a bit of those um, those numbers or those values, there's still a bit of a smoothing. But if we compare this one with the previous one, you'll see it's way smoother. They're also not in the same place. so kind of hard to compare them but you'll see you'll see there is a, a bit of difference in the corners as well so for the most part I like to leave these ones as 40 and 75 which is the default setting so I'm gonna delete this one I don't need it let's get out of solo mode and let's get out of this polyframe great so now we have these mesh that we created really quickly using spotlight using um, booleans to subtract this area. So one of the things that we need to keep in mind is that when we use a spotlight or a snapshot 3D, Cirrus is going to use whatever tool that we have selected. In this case, we had the, this, this cube of this front area. And <clears throat> Cirrus is going to use that to create the depth of whatever object is created using the boolean operation or the snapshot 3D. So in other words, the, the width of this mesh is exactly the same width as this one. So this is important to know because of the way that a Siri Mesher will handle things later on. And we're going to probably get or run into a lot of problems when we have coplanar faces. And coplanar faces, uh, let me just turn off all these folders. Coplanar faces are when you have two faces of different objects exactly in the same space or the same area in the 3D space. So right now it's hard to see because again this is ha this has exactly the same width. But if I turn polyframe on, you'll see, you know, this is right in the middle, or not in the middle, right in the in the edge. So this is no good. Um, this is gonna create some problems. So just make sure that if you're gonna do this type of things, you either scale it up. So we can just bring in the gizmo, center it. We can use the, the z-axis to just push it up, <clears throat> push it out, and that way there is no coplanar faces, and you're still getting the exact same face or the exact same effect. Just be aware of that. Um, alternatively, you can just, you know, which is what I'm going to do is scale it down and then push it forward. I just want to show you something else that I don't remember if um, I'm not sure if it is still part of zero it should be and it was under the boolean operation so let's go to the render palette and let's go to render boolean there we go so this is something that is part of the uh, you know the introduction of booleans in 4R8 so this coplanar let's put this on the right so you can see it so this coplanar or show coplanar will in theory show you whether coplanar faces maybe because I'm in solo mode I'm not sure why this is not working So it's, I mean, in theory, if you click show, show coplanar, you should have some red faces telling you that there are some coplanar. 
I don't know why it's not working, but uh, I just wanted to point that out because it's important, especially again thinking ahead that we're going to be using the series measure. It's better not to have any coplanar, any coplanar things. All right, so Pixology has been live for one hour and nine minutes and twenty-one seconds. That's the Nightbot telling us that we have one hour, almost one hour to go. So Khalil is asking, are you going to be using, uh, you're going to use Snapshot 3D? Yep, that's, I think that's a, an old question. I, that's how I use, uh, that's what I use to create this shape. Hey Omar, welcome, welcome, welcome. Uh, great, so all right, let's go ahead and move on. I'm going to select this, this bit, and I'm going to select the Gizmo 3D. We probably bring in uh, Polyframe as well. I'm going to scale this down and push it forward, maybe just a bit more. So this is kind of determining the width of that of that hole. Let me bring in the references. So this is kind of like the shape that I'm doing. So we just created kind of like this outline. Again, I'm not 100% following this, but you get the idea. It's pretty similar. So all I'm all I want to do is create a hole in here that has this shape. Later on, we're gonna take other boolean operations and we're going to create a hole for this circle and maybe for the screen and the same for this one you know but that's going to be separate objects so that we can build a more complex shape out of simple simple forms all right so let's turn off polyframe and let's go ahead and push this in until we see it there we go Oof, for a second I thought this is going to be going, going to crash. Let's just do a quick save. All right, so I'm going to push this in. And again, this is just trying to determine the, the width of this hole. Not the width, the depth of the hole. Maybe not too much. All right. So that's looking good. Um, the fix at this point is if you look at this from an angle and from I think I'm running into some stream because it's making series go really really slow uh, so I'm gonna go into solo mode and with a different material like the basic material now we have uh, I mean it's very very easy to spot like this blobby effect, right? So there's a few things that we can do. In, and in this case, I want to just use the um, polish by groups. Now the problem with polish by groups, let's just do one polish by groups so that you can see what, I, what I'm going to do. So under the deformation palette, you have these polish by groups and series is going to take into account the polygroups that we have and it's going to try to smooth them based on the polygroup, trying to keep the edge um, you know, clean or sharp. So if I do polish by groups to 100, we have a smoother version, which is very nice. Um, maybe let's turn off this and hopefully you can see this. So pay attention to these areas around here at the top. If I do this a couple of times, polish by groups, polish by groups, polish by groups, three times, you get a, a smoother version. So that's great. That's kind of like what I want so that we don't have this bubbly effect or blobby effect. However, because this is a single polygroup, so all of this is a single polygroup, is not taking into account these corners that I want to keep. So let's go ahead and do that very quickly. All we have to do is assign a different set of polygroups. So I'm going to hold Control and Shift and maybe just select this area. Let's also turn double so we can see behind. Um, okay, I think that's, that's looking good. So let's go ahead and hold Control and Shift and click once on these extra polygroups and we have this single selected uh, polygroup. So I'm going to hold Control W to assign a polygroup. There we go. And I'm going to do the same thing for this area. So just trying to find, you know, we can use the Select Lasso instead. So in this case, in this case I want actually to smooth this, this line to have a, a, a 
straight line here. So we can assign a polygroup here. So let's go ahead and do this type of thing. So I just selected this area and then I just need to start um, hiding the polygroups that I don't want. So let's go back to select rectangular, hold control and shift to hide this one, hide this one and this bit as well. And now we have this that we can control W to assign a different polygroup. All right, maybe I should have taken this more, this these two more as well. So let's hold select lasso and I'm gonna maybe use this. Now we can invert the selection, use the select rectangular, hold control and shift to isolate that one, invert the selection, and we can just hide the ones that we don't need. So right now, essentially what I'm doing is using the selection tools to isolate areas like this one and make sure that I have the polygroups that I want. So control W here, maybe another one. Cool, so now we have a few polygroups. We have the front, we have the back, and around the edge we have different polygroups. So this is gonna be perfect for Siri Mesha as well, but it's also a good way to maintain this kind of like sharp lines in here if we use the polish by groups. So we can turn off polyframe, go into basic material so that we can see the blobbiness a little bit better. There we go. And let's go to the polish by, by groups. And you see we keep these very sharp lines and that is because of the, the difference between one polygroup and the other. So I'm gonna do this a couple of times. So this is very, very smooth. Great. So maybe a little bit more. So this is creating this very nice and clean set of polygons. So that's great. Cool. So now that we have this as it is, and again, this is gonna be a solid piece that we're gonna extract from the mesh, uh, but because we have the polygroups, Sirius is gonna take into account again the polygroups that we use when we create the boolean. So all of these polygroups that we have here are gonna be kind of like painted into the, into the uh, boolean extraction. So we're gonna keep all of these polygroups so that we can do a, a cleaner Siri measure. So again, all of this is part of the planning on just thinking ahead for using the Siri measure. Let's do a quick save. Let's go to our sub tool list. Get out of solo mode, turn off polyframe. And now we have I don't know if it's the live boolean so or what it is. I'm just gonna turn it off for the time being. I'm not sure what that is, but it's it's kind of like making my computer go slow for some reason. So I'm gonna turn light booleans again and see if that is the issue. Not not very consistent, but you know, it is happening. So, all right, let's, we have this and hopefully that gives you an idea of that workflow. I'm gonna try to make it a little bit faster. Um, so let's go ahead and bring in some cylinders and let's create, let me just show you what we're gonna do here. So we created kind of like the, the basic hole for this. Let's go ahead and do a hole for this area, another one for this area. These are two of the same, it could be cylinders. And then we can use as well cylinders to create these, these gaps. So let's go ahead and do that. So I'm gonna append a cylinder. There we go. Bring in the Gizmo 3D, rotate it 90 degrees, holding shift so that it snaps to integer numbers. Scale it down, scale it down a bit more. All right, so I'm pretty sure now the problem is with the live booleans. Don't know what that is, but yeah, having live booleans kind of like make it sometimes a bit, a bit, um, a bit slow. All right, so let's go ahead and set the size for this. So I'm just gonna place this one, and I'm using the kind of like this outer edge of the um, of the Gizmo 3D to make sure that it's sort of touching this edge here and this one here. So that that is kind of like a help to to know that these the space between these two areas at the top and the left hand side are kind of consistent. Uh, but I'm just thinking, you know what? Just let's let's eyeball it. All right. So we have these two, let's go ahead and hold control, click and drag, 
and because they're exactly the same we can just have them within the same subtool let's just hold control click and drag outside to clear the mask and we can center now the, the gizmo 3d and we can push this in and we can bring in that into the front panel enable booleans and let's go ahead push this forward again this i think these ones are a little bit more embedded than the other border that we created so maybe just push them in a bit all right now the reason i use um cylinder instead of snapshot 3d in this case is uh, for two reasons actually one is just it is easier <laughs> and we have a simple or a simpler topology that we can edit with the similar so let's get into solo mode and you know what we can go ahead and just delete or hide this one at the bottom and i'm just gonna bring in my custom palette which i don't know why i'm having problems with my shortcuts so let's delete hidden all right so that we can do the tweaks in this single single um cylinder and then we can just duplicate it so let's turn on let's go into c modular and i'm just going to add a couple of edge loops here oops right click insert just a couple of edge loops here and then we can just use bevel to create a bit of bevel in here so what I'll do is create a little bit in a little bit here and then create a couple more bevels in this area so it's going to round this a bit more so I'm going to click once and once here now let's undo that let's do it manually so click and drag something like that and click once here all right so that is a little bit softer uh, we can do the same thing using dynamic subdivision but you know why not do it now if we can um, all right so let's go ahead and go to the poly 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 groups poly groups and let's group by normals so I don't know if that did anything cannot see the difference nope let's use the group front nope group by normals again all right so here's a good example of how you can start tweaking these group by normals so that you get the, the right amount um, this one would be really easy to just hide this this part and assign a polygroup but with group by normals we can increase the the max angle to 90 nope reduce that to 15 12 and there we go so now we have um, reducing the angle is kind of like doing this let me just get closer so you can have an idea all right so these um, yeah this group by normals angle is going to determine what's um, what's the angle between let's say this area here and this area here and this one here and this one here and this one here right so these different this difference in the in the polygons are creating an angle so this angle here this angle here hopefully you can kind of see what this is so i'm just <laughs> i'm just trying to explain this maybe not the not in the best way possible um So this angle from this line here and this line here now we're telling ZBrush to use a uh, 15 uh, degrees so anything that is that is lower than 15 is gonna create a different polygroup so when there when ZBrush finds an angle like this um, hopefully that's kind of clear not, not sure if it's gonna be if it's clear enough but you know if I if I change this to 90 degrees now the angles are gonna be quite high so it would be maybe a difference between this one and this one but because these two polygroups are connected by this um, softer line with less straight angles then it's not gonna do anything so if I click this it's just gonna be a single thing so let's just reduce that to 15 or anything 30 might, might work as well nope so 18 uh, there you go so very quickly we have that and we can just hold control and control and shift to isolate embed that selection and then just hide this and i'm gonna give it a single polygroup to this area uh, this one as well a single polygroup so now we have these these polygroups that are going to help the um, siri mesh to create a you know a simpler topology all right let's get out of solo mode let's get out of this polymesh 3d 
and let's go ahead and bring in the gizmo and repeat the action that we did at the beginning hold control click and drag i'm just going to place this around there hold control click and drag to remove the mask and there we go so we have this base um, ready to go uh, one one thing we can do i'm going to avoid any let me bring in the references i'm going to avoid any of these little areas so all of this I'm just gonna avoid that and I'll do it after um, I just want to concentrate on the big shapes first then kind of like blocking them and now let's go ahead and do this one so uh, another area of, on another shape to create this circle as well as this one and probably the screens as well so these two are going to be the same or well, the same process so i'm going to do one first kind of like showing the steps and the other one i'll try to do it faster and after that we can just go ahead and do this this knob cool so let me see if there is any any news in the chat and let's do a quick save as well and this looks pretty boring but you know we have to you, you know, we need to take things uh, one step at a time. Um, uh, there we go. What program do you use to sketch over? The Epic Pen. <laughs> I think this is the that question for this little software that I use here for um, drawing. I get more questions about that than actual um, actual questions of zero, which is great. Um, anybody knows his tablet keyboard setup? Uh, let's see if someone answered that. Um, so C Progress is asking if uh, what's my setup for the keyboard and tablet. So the setup is really simple. I mean, uh, the keyboard. I have a keyboard here at the top of my tablet. Just, I can just get rid of it and just put it back in. And I have like a total hack using wood and, and stuff to to be able to have it right in front of the like right at the top of my Cintiq, but it doesn't cover my the vision of my well, the software that I'm using. And the rest is just the um, the EQ remote, the EK remote or Express Keys remote. And I'm using that to you know kind of control. The different actions that I that I use, and I have a custom setup. So all I do is assign specific hotkeys to the remote, and then I can access them in zero. So, for example, for in this case, if I wanna if I wanna append a anything, um, I assigned a custom hotkey to the append button here. You see, it's Shift A, and I can just go and click on this button, and it will appear in zero. See, there we go. So click on this one, brings the append uh, menu. That's kind of like the setup. It's not it's not complicated at all. It's just it's just um, assigning shortcuts to the way that I work. Um, but that is pretty much it. And it works because I have a custom UI as well and a custom set of hotkeys. All right, so let's move on and create this, this area right here. So this is something that's gonna go kind of like inside this other shape. So I'm thinking that we might have to create a, a couple of a couple of actions here. Um, we can create star groups, or we can create a, a boolean group, and then boolean the next thing on top of it. So um, let's just try both and see what happens. Mm. I'm just thinking what would be the best way to go about this. Let's go ahead and append a cylinder and or we can duplicate this that we have already assigned polygroups and all that. So this one here and I can just hide and delete one of these. Right and bring in the Gizmo 3D, center that and we can use this one to place it where we want it to. So let's get out of solo mode. Okay, now this stopped working. 
Now I'm convinced that there is a there's something going on with the booleans. All right, so this is going to be kind of like where that panel or that screen is placed. So I'm going to try to center the best way I can just by eyeballing it like so. So that looks all right. Um, if we enable, let's put this inside just so, so that I can illustrate this point. And if we enable, let's turn everything off again. Uh, if I enable uh, subtraction from this icon here, turn off polyframe, you'll see that we're applying this to the entire mesh. And we can just tweak this, right? So this is working kind of like expected. Um, we can reduce the beveling by just simply squashing the entire cylinder. All right, so I think this is working fine. Uh, the problem is gonna be when we add an, an extra set. So I think this, instead of being subtraction, it should be an addition to this. So let's just leave the subtraction as it is right now. All right, and I'm gonna duplicate this, right? put it inside the, the folder. I'm gonna scale it down a tiny bit. And this is the normal addition. So here's how we can create that little gap. Go ahead and rotate this 90, uh, 180 degrees, push that in, and we can also, all right, I think that's, that's working fairly, fairly decent. All right, so it's a, a little bit blocky on the edges, but again, we're gonna be using dynamics of division later on. Um, and it's something that we can also tweak once we have the series mesh. Relatively very complex object uh, in terms of what a series mesh can handle. So we have a lot of, you know, loops, um, creases, and, you know, rounded areas next to the very sharp edges. So I, I'm not sure how this is going to play out, but, you know, we're gonna try it. Um, all right, so we have this. It's going to solo mode. I'm just gonna tweak the the beveling of this a bit more, just because it looks a little bit flat. So I'm not I'm not happy with this. So let's go ahead and bring in the C modeler. Right click. Let's click on mask, and I'm gonna click on this polygroup, invert the mask, bring in the Gizmo 3D, center that pivot, and we can just scale this a tiny bit. All right, something else that we can do is hold control, click and drag to mask just the front and you know try to try to grab the beveling as well. Invert that and we can just push this forward and scale it in the y axis in this case. So that's going to increase the the beveling a little bit more. Great. So now we can push this back. And I think we might have to revert that scaling of this front. So I'm gonna click on that, on in, on this polygroup, invert the mask, bring in the gizmo, and we can just scale this down a bit. There we go. All right, so this is kind of like the the place where the, where the screen is going to sit. So what I was saying about the, the different star groups is that if I get out of solo mode, I need to create another another mesh that's gonna subtract the screen from this one, right? So let's go ahead and do that. I'm gonna append a anything, doesn't matter, a cone, because I'm gonna turn this co uh, cone into a QQ. So for you guys should be under the initialize tab. Uh, there you have a few options. I'm gonna click on QQ, and that creates a quick cube, which is very simple. Put that inside the folder, and I'm gonna bring this forward and this is going to be the one that I'm going to use to um, screen. So I'm going to go for a ratio type of screen. Let's do a quick save just in case. I'm, I'm having some freezing issues. All right, something like that. So that's where the screen is going to be. And it's also like a, a rounded screen. So we can use the Q-Cube or 
to bevel this or we can also use the snapshot 3D. I'm just gonna keep it simple, go into solo mode and here we can use a C-modular to bevel these edges. Uh, in this case, it's just gonna be easier to just enable symmetry and bevel this like so or maybe, oops, I undo something. Oops. There we go. Um, I think it will be easier to do, just do this, the same thing that we did with the previous box. So I'm going to create a an insert, just click and drag, and I'm using symmetry. So this is going to be kind of like the, the bevel of these areas. Hold control and click and drag to select that area, bring in the gizmo, push this down. So that is going to create some corners. We can also click and drag to create some additional poly loops like so um, it's, I mean it's not ideal you know what I'm gonna revert this <laughs> I'm gonna do I'm gonna do it uh, properly so I'm gonna delete this okay and this time I'm gonna append a cylinder and let's go ahead and, and we're gonna use the cylinder to start from the corners and we're gonna expand it like I said we can also use I'm gonna show you two methods I'm gonna use this cylinder first to show you this uh, more accurately you know creation of this of this simple geometry and then we're gonna use snapshot 3d so what I would do is just to scale this down hold control and drag this area like so and then bring in the gizmo Oops, hold control and we just extrude this area like that and let's do the same thing hold control click and drag for this area to mask out these vertices and then hold control click and drag down so we just basically created a a cube but it has like a perfectly rounded corner using the the cylinder so that's really handy now let's go ahead and delete or remove the mask center that pivot we can bring in the rest it's a little bit too big Scale that down. All right, so this is going to be now the the screen. So I'm gonna try to get the the size right for the for the corners, right? And now we can hold Control to mask this area, and we can push this to this side. Invert the mask, push this one to the side mask out the, let's clear the mask first, mask the bottom, push this up, invert the mask, push this down. All right, so now we can just click on the on the house and that will center the, the entire mesh to the canvas, uh, but then we can just obviously move that in place. Another freeze, quick save. Let's push this forward. Hmm, this is interesting. So it's not super consistent, but it's happening. So I'm gonna have to look into this. And I think it's happening with the booleans enabled. I don't have any other complex shapes or anything. All right, so now we can go ahead and maybe scale this down a bit and reposition this so that it looks better. Now we can go ahead and, because this is such a thin part for the for the screen we can just enable subtraction and we can just place it a little bit better so here's where the screen is going to be great and we are almost done with this part so all I want to do now is duplicate this mesh and the and the screen as well so that we can have it in this side as well because uh, I mean this is slightly different but bring in the the references um, we have this part covered let's go ahead and do this one which is going to be slightly different but you know same process um, so Capi, Capiro, Capiro to, I don't know what this uh, what its name is Capiro to Africano Capiro to Africano do you stand uh, do you work standing up yep so um, I have a, a standing desk. If you go to the ZBrush guys, there is a, a whole post about the, the workstation that I have and how I like to work. And I just found, I just recently switched to uh, 
sitting down desk to a standing desk and it's been absolutely uh, fantastic just because I don't know I have I feel that I have more energy and I can move around more and I don't get as tired and I think it's healthier um, but I, I do have a, a standing desk that I can put down as well so if I get too tired or I want to spend some time maybe writing tutorials and things like that I can just put it down uh, could you in the future live teach I've teach you how to use uh, serial measure in could you in the future life in your future life teach you teach you to use serial measure in CAD complex model um, how do serial measure CAD complex model yeah I just don't use CAD <laughs> but if I if I get a model from CAD I'll, I can try it um, I'm, again I'm trying to create this in serial measure sorry in um, in booleans because that's going to be very similar to CAD models in terms of the complexity and so it's going to be very 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 similar so hopefully that that helps all right so let's just move on really quickly I'm going to duplicate this this mesh um, and I'm going to move that here I'm going to reduce the size quite a bit and these ones I'm, I'm using the gizmo if you remember uh, this is something important to point out uh, if you remember the front um, the front faces of this of this cylinder so now that's why the the gizmo is right in the in this plane that's why I can scale it down and up um, and it's going to be you know at the same distance of the other or the bigger shape hmm. very very slow for a few minutes now all right, so I'm going to scale this down a quite quite a bit more. Maybe scale it up. Just want a, a tinier, a smaller gap here. All right, so looking good. Now let's go ahead and duplicate this as well. And in order to maintain the same sort of distance, I don't know if I want to maintain the same distance to be honest. So let's just go ahead and go into solo mode, and I'm just going to scale this down. I'm just going to increase the size of this and essentially increasing or decreasing the the beveling of the of the borders. All right, something like that. Center the mask, sorry, the pivot, scale that down. Now let's go and place this All right, so it's slightly different screen there. Make sure that this is inside the the folder that we're using for this front panel, and enable subtraction. All right, we can just push this one forward a bit more, and there we go. So let's get out of this gizmo. We have completed kind of like the the armature or the base for the front panel. All right, so let's do a quick save, and let's go ahead and. Maybe let's check what's the time. Do we have time? So we have about 20 more minutes. Um, all right, I already showed you some of the techniques to dig holes and create this type of thing. So maybe let's go ahead and do some something with the with the knobs. So I'm gonna try to create this type of thing uh, with a single piece, and then we can just put it on top. And these are the type of pieces that we can create and and turn into a um, IMM brush so that we can duplicate it or reuse it in different projects and, and things like that. So let's go ahead and do that first. So we can collapse this. And we're going to start from a cylinder probably. So let's go ahead and append a cylinder. And we can turn off the entire this entire uh, folder. All right. So we're going to work on this individually and then we can just scale it and place it in, in, in the right place. So let's go ahead and how do we want to do this? Okay, I think I think we can use booleans as well and do a quick serial measure on just this piece. So and, and that should give you an idea of the different process that we can use later on. So I'm going to bring in the C modeler and I'm going to delete some of these these loops so 
let's just delete. All right, and let's right click, select insert, and I'm going to create an insert closer to this area and another one closer to this area. Also, let's go ahead and do another one here just so we can we don't get the, the weird artifacts at the bottom. And another one here. All right. Now we can bring in the gizmo, scale this down, and this is kind of like the base for the knob. Cool. Um, another thing we can do is maybe let's append another cylinder and start fresh from the cylinder. Okay, and this is the one that is going to give us the, the shape for the for the way that you hold or handle that knob. So let's scale that down a bit. All the way to, again, this is kind of like the width of that. I think that's a, a decent, decent size. Maybe a little bit less. Um, I don't know, something like that. And then we can use the same technique that I show you with the with some other pieces where I just going to into solo mode I'm gonna hold control and mask out this area and then hold control to extrude this like so so that is gonna give us this nice rounded pill shape uh, that we have some nice geometry and nice flow geometry here in the borders we just need to add some extra loops in here all right so let's go ahead and get out of solo mode clear the mask and position this a bit all right, center that pivot. Cool. We can click on the house again to just make sure this right in the middle. And then we can push this up. All right, so that's looking good. And we can then do, like I said, a series measure of this whole thing um, after we Boolean this object. But before I do that, I want to I wanna make sure that this has a bit more polygroups and polygons. So we can right click here and insert multi edge loop tool so click and drag and that's going to create this maybe a bit more again i don't mind going a little bit overboard with the amount of polygons at this stage because since we're going to re remesh that it's not going to be a big deal um, what i want to make sure i do though is that i have different polygroups so i want to have different polygroups in these areas and at the front and at the back so let's go back to a polygroup. And again, once you get into the flow of using Siri Mesha, I think these polygrouping tools or these, uh, these buttons here are going to become essential for, for the process and for your workflow. So let's, cl let's click on Group by Normals. And we got a pretty decent result straight away. So that's, I'm happy with that. But additionally to this, I want to maintain kind of like a sharp line in here when the Siri Mesha goes around and does this. So I'm going to hold control and shift, click and drag to isolate that. Also turn double so we can see. Um, and we can go ahead and create a series of different polygroups. So I'm going to group by normal just this bit. Right, so now we have one, two, three, four different polygroups. That's good. And just want to make sure, oh, this is the same polygroup. All right, so we just need to hide it again hang on a second I think it's a, an easier way to do this so let me just undo that all right and I'm going to change the group by normals hmm. let's do another polygroup so control W to assign a single polygroup again so now for sure just the centerpiece is going to be different than this, right? And now we can use the polygroup by normal. So in theory, nope. Let's do that again. What I'll do is I'm gonna isolate this single one. Nope. Hide everything except this one and assign an individual group to this one. So now we have this as it is. Okay, so we have to do we have a bit of an issue here. So I'm going to select this, embed that selection, Control W to assign its own polygroup. And we have one here in the in front. So 
I'm not too fast about this one because you know we can we can live without but you know it's better to do it right from the beginning so hold control and shift maybe holding alt to invert that selection now holding alt and control w control w there we go Ooh, I did an extra one um, that's fine let's just <laughs> this is taking longer than when I thought all right let's go ahead and and hide these ones invert that selection invert that invert that invert that invert that or hide it hide this one as well control W so I'm just gonna do this really quickly because I should have planned this a little bit better and all I'm doing really here is just assign polygroups That took up a, uh, a bit of time, <laughs> but um, there we go. So all I'm trying to do here with this very simple shape is to create a series of polygroups that the edges or the difference between polygroup is going to create um, a straight line or a straight uh, edge loop when the once the when we use the the series measure. Cool. So now that we have that here, um, maybe we can remove some. Ah, just leave it like that. Don't worry too much about it. Uh, going to solo mode, let's go to this other circle and one thing I want to do for this one is add a bit of tapering effect. So I'm going to bring in the gizmo 3D, make sure that this is in the center, click on the cog icon and use this taper deformer. So this taper deformer is great and it's one of the deformers that I found to be, I don't know, I didn't expect it to be something that I use that much and I'm just using it for everything, just to tweak the shapes of the, of the uh, um, basic geometry so I'm just gonna taper this in just a bit just a quick design decision there and like I did with this one let's go ahead and maybe I want to select this one and make it smaller to be honest it's just too big uh, no need to poly group for the screen uh, what do you mean uh, Khalil what what do you mean by polygrouping by the by the screen for the screen? I'm not sure what you mean in there. Um, all right, so let's just move along because we have a couple uh, to ten more minutes to do the entire super meshing and get this this thing right. Um, all right. One more thing I want to do before we do the serial measure and we, before we start creating this is two things. I want to assign a polygroup to the to the base and I also, let's just go ahead and do a folder for this. Let's call this uh, dial. Let's just put that in. Um, so I want to duplicate this that I already have the, the taper effect. I'm going to duplicate that. Use the Gizmo 3D to rotate it. And then I'm going to scale it a tiny bit like that and then also make it smaller. So this is just to create a little detail here. I said I said I was gonna, wasn't was going to do these type of details just yet, but since we're already going to use the serial measure to put this thing together, it's better to have it all within it. So I'm going to put this down and I'm going to turn this subtraction mode. Right. So that I want to mention that it's important to know or it's important to take into account is that if you put your booleans right up, right in the edge of where there might be polygroups, that is going to cause another problem when you do, or it's going to give you problems when you get to see remeasure. So I want to try to make sure that this is either completely over the the two polygroups here, so that it's easier or not at all so I think that as a placement could work all right 
Um, and that is that is it, right? That is pretty much all we need to do. So let's get out of booleans. I'm gonna select this bit, get into solo mode. And I just want to have a different polygroup for the base and for the border. So this one is going to be really easy. And maybe let's hide this one as well. So just the back, a different polygroup. That is all we need. And this one as well. So do the same thing, but this time I want a polygroup for the back, just this area. And I want a, a polygroup for the front, so just just this area. Cool. So now we have all the polygrouping that we need, and we have all the pieces that we need to combine them or to do the Boolean operation and then create a Siri Mesha single object from that. So this is very similar to the process that we're going to use for the rest of the parts. Um, I'm going to try to, you know, do a little bit more work on this on this object so that you don't have to see here and repeat exactly the same process once again uh, for the next session. But let's go ahead and do that really quickly so you know the process. All right, so let's turn on Booleans again. Uh, get out of solo mode. So we have this single, this object part of a single, um, of a single folder. So one of the cool things about the folders from this 2019 is that we can produce this operation all within the folder. So before I create that operation or before I process the booleans, I want to enable um, dynamic. So I'm going to select this one. Whoops. Don't know what, that, what I did there. All right. <laughs> something, something happened there. Um, I'm going to select this one and I'm going to click on dynamic. So you'll see that we get a, a smoother version of this. And that is kind of like what I want. I'm going to do the same thing for this, going to dynamic. And we're getting a bit of a, we're getting an, an issue here, but we can go into the wireframe mode and we can hopefully do some loops. So I'm going to get into solo and go into the C modeler, right click here, insert. And I'm going to click here and that's going to give us something else. One second, right click, insert, single edge loop so we can click and drag. I'm just gonna push this one closer to the to the border as well. And that is not affecting any of our polygroups, so it's not a big deal. Just create one here for the center. So that looks better. And I'm gonna do the same thing for the for the Boolean operation, so I'm going to make it a dynamic object. We can um, smooth this a little bit more, but for the, for the time being to create the base of the Siri Mesha, I think it's it working really nice. So now we can go ahead and click on the cog icon of the folder, and we have two options. We can do Boolean folder and we can do Boolean with subdivision. So because we enable dynamic subdivision, um, we're going to have to do it with Boolean with subdiv. So I'm going to click on that. And that's it. It took like no time. <laughs> so here we have the resulting mesh. So this is a single mesh. We can turn off live booleans if we want to. So we have the dial, the original pieces that we create, uh, that we use to create this dial, and we have this dial on its own, right? So it's looking pretty nice. And if we turn on polyframe, we have this. I mean, it's not terrible, but definitely some areas need help. And this is where the theory measure hopefully it's gonna give us some nice results. Now, I can already see some issues that we might run into. So I'm just gonna see what it, uh, the Siri measure gives me as a, with the straight, you know, without tweaking any of the, of the settings, but I'm pretty sure I'm gonna get some weird results and I'll show you why after we get it. If we don't get them, no point to explain something that we didn't get, but let's go to the geometry and or geometry sub palette, open up Siri Mesh. And if I just do a quick Siri Mesh as it is, it's not going to be great. I mean, it's going to be gonna give us something decent, but it's not going to be great. Actually, it's pretty good. <laughs> so if I turn off this, so it's a pretty decent geometry. And it's not too complex, this one, but um, 
this is something that it looks pretty good, but I want to have more control over these edge loops. And that is when the new version of the Siri Mesha comes into play. So this is the algorithm of the new version, but I haven't tweaked any of the, of the settings. So let me undo that. Um, so all I want to do at this point is enable these keep groups, right? Um, ideally for this type of objects uh, that are very well defined with these polygroups, are, or these polygroups are very well defined, uh, we want to keep the smooth groups to zero. But let's see what this just enabling the keep groups give us. So now the Siri mesh are here, keeping groups. So now we have, and here's the problem that I was expecting to have. Now, this is a pretty decent, definitely really, really good automatic version of, of this. So we get a very decent topology that we can work on. It has very nice sharp edges, uh, but we can definitely improve this a little bit more. So I want to have more control over this area, um, although it looks pretty decent right now. And also one thing we can do because this object is right in the middle is enable the symmetry before uh, before we run the Siri mesh. And that's going to try to give us a more you know, symmetrical version and try to place uh, a line right in the middle. So let's undo that again. And all I did is enable symmetry. So from the transform palette, I have symmetry enabled in this X axis and keeping groups. That's all I've done so far. Let's do a Siri mesh again. And now this fixes a few of the problems. Um, and this is great if you have a symmetrical shape because now we have this line right in the middle. All right, so I'm pretty happy with this. There's some issues here that we can um, take care of. So just in case, let's duplicate this and just hide it. Because again, I'm happy with this as it is and there's some things that we can tweak manually and that's not a problem, but I'm gonna try to get something that it's a bit better just with using the Siri mesh. All right, so let's undo that. Now what I wanna do is take the smooth groups to zero. So the smooth, the smooth groups, what it does is, uh, if you have it at zero, is there's no smoothing between the groups. If you have it a one, when a Siri, when Siri does a Siri mesh, it's gonna smooth those groups as it produces the Siri mesh. So smoothing the groups is the same as, let's just find an area here. Um, so there's a there's actually a a brush that allows you to do this. I'm gonna hold Shift just to access the smooth brush, and I'm just gonna move, smooth this out. All right. So you will see what is happening here. Hopefully this is um, this is gonna be good uh, a good example to explain this. Right. So the difference between these groups is not a straight line, right? And this is just something that we cannot avoid. Uh, and this is the result of the Boolean operation, right? So we have this, this peaks here. This is not the best color to, to showcase this, this one either. Let's do black line. All right. So we have this very choppy line, uh, and that's something that we cannot avoid using Booleans because we're trying to um, connect a bunch of these, of these lines from this object into just a few of these ones from this other object. So Seabrush does its best, its best to connect this and create this, um, this line. Now, the problem is, for Siri Mesha, the problem is that this border is like jagged or like there's a jagged line here. So this smoothing groups at zero is gonna maintain the, the sharpness of that smooth. Whereas if you have this at one of the, um, hold on, hang on a second. If this one is set at one, if the smooth groups is set at one, Sirius is gonna produce this effect. So what you write, what you see right now here is being smooth. So the groups are being smoothed out uh, or the definition between the, smooth, the groups are being smoothed out. Whereas if you uh, push these smooth groups again to one, then um, it's gonna, sorry, to zero. <laughs> That's what I'm trying to explain in this one, right? So if the smooth groups is set to zero, then there is not gonna be any smoothing or, or the action that I just showed you with the smooth brush is just gonna be a straight line. Hopefully that's clear. Let me just undo that. Right, so right now, that line is still there. So this is not a smoothing groups. So this is a smooth groups of zero, that's the slider. If I were to have this to one, this smoothing is what is happening before you run the Siri mesh. And it's the same thing that, um, that happens with the polish by groups. So if I had this weird line like this, I can also go to the deformation palette in case you have something like that. 
and then you can go to the polish by groups and that kind of like sharpens this line this line again right so that's what these polish by groups is doing so let's undo that and let's see if that makes any difference all right so poly groups uh, so I have symmetry enabled I have keep groups and I have smooth groups to zero let's do a quick zero measure and that gives us a much better result I think except that this now has some weird lines here but this is a, an excellent a, a pretty decent result for an automated tool um, right now I have a, a target polygon count of five uh, we could reduce this but I'm pretty happy with this and all we have to do this is the first pass of zero measure then we can do another one where we can refine areas like this so uh, something that we can do is go ahead and hold control and shift to select this invert select this select this and these weird polygons that we have here we can just invert hang on select that polygroup all right so we'll probably have to at this point we can use the polygroup by normal and all I want to do is create two different groups the little border that we have here and this entire thing is going to have a its own polygroup right so again I'm, let me just do that so I can show you what I'm trying to do uh, polygroups how we time we're already at the two hour mark so I'm just going to do this really quickly to wrap up um, I'm going to click on group by normals and you'll see that we have two different polygroups the green one for this border and the green one for the for the front so what I'd like to do in this sort of second step or second stage of, of refining the, the series measure is the first one or the first step uh, let's just name name them here so step one right is to create these lines right to create the polygroups so that it's very it's very precise the the difference between between the different polygroups so that Siri measure can or, or know exactly where we want to have these straight lines or these very very sharp lines so that is the first step then the second step let's do it with a different color uh, oops, step two so the second step would be to refine the polygroups and run the Siri measure again so now we know that we, we want to keep these these lines so we can take um, this whole thing and make it into a polygroup this whole thing and make it into a, poly a polygroup which is what I did and the rest of them they're already kind of like it's own polygroup so it's fine so all I have to do is create a single polygroup for this this part let's see if that give us a better result so I'm gonna hold control and shift select this polygroup invert and just hide the ones that I need and hold control and W all right so now we have a simpler set of polygroups all right and let's go ahead and go to the Siri measure and this time uh, we can use the same thing I want to keep symmetry since this is a, a symmetrical object um, a smooth groups I want that to be zero although in this case because we already run this the Siri measure there's not going to be any weird problems here like if we smooth this is going to give us a nice smoothing option which is kind of like what we're going to do later on but just so you know so at this point the smoothing groups doesn't really matter because we have a very well defined edge between the, the polygroups so I'm just gonna leave it at zero see what that does uh, keep groups that's what I want and I also want to enable these detect edges so the detect edges what it's gonna do is detect where there is some, some hard edges here um, so it's gonna create the polygroups in there and it's gonna keep not not create a polygroup sorry it's gonna keep the, the sharp lines in there uh, but because there is no polygrouping in here and there's no hard edges anymore then this is going to be a smooth um, a smooth surface all right let's go ahead and click zero measure think across and there we go pretty pretty decent so this is a really really cool automated tool um, that we can use and of course um, we can you know what I really like this one I think it's a pretty decent result I'm going to duplicate that um, yep duplicate that but before I move any further what I want to do is try a bit of a um, reducing the geometry a little bit so I'm gonna undo that one step 
and I'm gonna set this to two two thousand and let's do a quick zero measure pretty decent so we can keep reducing it uh, in terms of the polygon polygon count so we can simplify it a bit more so let's try it one I mean once you get to this point you can just simply click half and zero mesh is gonna give you half of what you currently have so we can do zero mesh now and uh, we have this problem in here so I think this one is fine we can just go ahead and refine it manually no big deal so if you want to reduce the amount of polygons here we can go with the sim modeler right click delete delete edge loop complete so I want to delete a few of these that we don't need oh you know what I actually I'm actually gonna use this one so I'm gonna delete in between just to reduce some of them there we go uh, we can do the same thing here so I'm gonna delete a few of these and this as well gives us a, a good set of loops that we can delete as well but I think I want to keep it consistent maybe here we can delete a few there we go and here in the middle instead of deleting I can just add a couple more so I'm gonna right click insert we can turn off symmetry and see this is what is great about the serial mesh 3 now uh, we have this perfect loop that we can just click and drag to add more loops uh, it is absolutely phenomenal uh, for this area if, if we want to update it to be more useful for us uh, I'm, I'm just going to show you this really quickly and that's going to be kind of like the wrap up for this live stream hold control and shift to select this area and what I'll do is I'm going to invert that selection and I'm just going to delete that right so for that I just want to go to delete hidden which for you guys should be under this geometry palette under the modified topology delete hidden and I can manually close this hole with a concentric point so using the C modeler I can right click on this edge and I'm gonna close hole so I'm gonna select a uh, close concave hole and that's gonna give us kind of like the this weird looking um, the triangles kind of like with the Sculptris Pro uh, generates or decimation so I'm gonna undo that and instead I'm gonna click on this convex hole so now we can click and drag up to create more poly loops or drag up and down to create like um, you know a bit of a curvature which is kind of cool for this case so I'm gonna reduce the amount push this one forward a bit there we go so that is kind of cool so now we can clean this up with some polygroups if we want to hold control click and shift select those control W to assign a new polygroup and there we go so very clean I mean there are some things that you can definitely manually tweak like I just did um, but that is that is it that is pretty much the process that I found to be or the workflow that I found to be quite helpful with the new Siri mesh. I mean it's a fantastic tool it's, it's just magic how it does all of these hard surface uh, so at this point I can just switch the material really quickly turn polyframe off uh, and we can use dynamic so let's do a quick save just in case we can use dynamic to I'll, I'll do it from this angle so you guys can see what I'm doing um, enable dynamic subdivision from this here and that gives us these very nice and smooth smooth areas right so we can use something not Q grid in this case but we can well, we can try Q grid see what that gives us enable bevel and the coverage just to tweak this um, I like the bevel in these areas but I also like the, the sharpness here let's just keep the Q grid to zero and we can increase the smooth subdivision to three so it's gonna be very very smooth and this is just a preview of this um, of this mesh uh, what I like to do is maybe smooth out the transition here so that is more like a soft a soft curve here and what I can do is turn off this go into polyframe and I'm gonna bring in the C modeler at this point right click in here and first I can simply delete some poly loops so I'm gonna delete edge loop maybe this one here right and then we can delete this one as well now yeah 
Let's just delete this one, see what happens. And here I want to just bevel this one. So right click, bevel, click and drag. And that's going to give us this very nice set of loops. You know what? I'm going to do it. Yeah, let's just do it like that. And then I click on this one to add more bevels to this area, just to make it a bit softer. All right, so that is looking pretty good. Let's go ahead and hold Control. Let's go to the Move Brush, hold Control, click and click on those polygroups. This one as well. So now this is going to be its own polygroup. Pretty, pretty decent for a few, a few, um, a few minutes of work after the zero measure is done. All right, so now we can turn off Polyframe, enable Dynamic, and we have a pretty decent hard surface type of piece and we can go ahead and you know keep refining it a bit we can use crease edge or add a few more poly loops here which I'm gonna do really quickly so I'm gonna oops, right click insert it's gonna add one here closer to this border and closer to this border and as well as here just make this border a little bit sharper and same here you can do this a sharper edge in there. There we go. And at the bottom, I think we, we are good with, yeah, we're good. All right. So now this is kind of like the final piece that we can use dynamic. And that's it. We can go ahead and continue in the next, in the next session with um, a more interesting and more complex shapes, also using the Siri mesh up. And I don't know, hopefully guys, you guys, can see the value of this uh, this process using Siri Mesh. It's really, really cool, really simple once you get the hang of it. Uh, it's all about polygrouping and planning ahead. And once you understand that, that the polygroups is kind of like the driving force of the Siri Mesh in a way, then I think it's the driving force. You could also use them without any polygroups. But uh, let's put it this way. Without polygroups, it's still gonna give you a pretty decent result. Uh, the fact that you have polygroups is is kind of like having more control over exactly where you want to put the poly loops. That's it. So polygroups will give you a more ha uh, manual control over the the result. So now that I have this here, let's just do a quick save. I want to turn dynamic off so that we can finish up a little bit faster. Um, I have all of these pieces that I created. So all I'm going to do is place them inside this dial, right? And just close this, and I'm gonna rename this, rename folder, dial originals, there we go. And this one could be inside another folder, and we call this one dials, all right? So now that we have that, we can turn, we can push this folder at the top, because I'm not gonna touch that, and then have the rest ready. Select the dial, this one, bring in the gizmo 3D, rotate that 90 degrees, scale that down. So here is the, the first dial. Um, I'm gonna turn on live volume so I can see what this is doing and move that in place. All right, definitely, I'm definitely convinced that there is something going on with Booleans because every time that I turn it on, it just makes it really, really slow. This is not a complex shape either, so I don't know what's going on. All right, so we have the first dial. Let's go ahead and hold control or we can duplicate it since it is within the same folder. Put this down. And here is our second dial. I'm not gonna rotate them or anything just yet. That uh, I think that would be considered like posing it, um, which we'll do later on. So here is the result of what we did today. <laughs> um, I think a bit of progress in terms of like showing the, the workflow, but hopefully we can move a little bit faster. So we did um, the dials, the, the blocking of the body and some details here for the screens. So we're gonna have some fun next, um, the next live stream 
adding some of the extra handles and all the details to, to make this really interesting and obviously work a little bit more on the Siri Mesha. So hopefully guys, you guys have a, a good idea of how this workflow, how my workflow with Siri Mesha is and, and hopefully it helps you as well. But I'm gonna leave it here. Thank you so much for joining in guys. If you have any last minute question uh, about the process that I use, uh, feel free to ask them. I'm, I'm wrapping up here. Let's do a quick render to show you um, what we did with Polyframe. Let's see. So this is um, this is the mesh that we did. The only one that we have remeshed is the actual handle. So that's the one that looks a little bit a little bit better. Um, any questions so far? No. All good. Great. Again, thank you so much, guys, for joining in. Um, it's always a pleasure to hang around here. Uh, thanks so much, guys. And yeah, I'll see you next next week. Oh, by the way, a uh, couple of admin things <laughs> to get out of the way. I might not be, I'm, I'm gonna go overseas um, in a couple of weeks. So I'm not gonna be able to do the live streams for like almost three weeks. Um, so sorry about that. But uh, when I come back, I have a pretty, pretty big deal to, to share with you guys. Um, so I think there is one, one more stream next week and the week after. So two more. I have to, I have to double check with Kyle, but a couple more streams. And then I have to take a break for uh, almost three weeks uh, that I'm going to be overseas. But then we'll resume as normal. Um, the other thing I wanted to show you, in case you haven't seen it. So I shared this in uh, Zero Central, so it's in there, the link is there. And I also shared it in, hang on a second. Here we go. So if you go to the Zero Guides, uh, just for you, in case you're interested, I released first, this is a, a Three, three or four weeks old now, uh, the introduction to C-Modeler. So we just created this kind of like uh, bathroom archi architecture visualization type of thing. And then I created this uh, Creative Boost and Productivity Boost. And these are just two introductory guides to ZBrush 2019. So the Creative Boost has things like the NP NPR filter and the NPR filters, the um, the snapshot 3D and that type of thing that are more like creative tools that allow you to be creative and create stuff. Uh, whereas the productivity boost talks about Siri Mesha, uh, folders, different actions like the camera, the universal camera that it might not look like a big deal, but it is it is absolutely fantastic. So um, in case you guys want uh, a couple of gu guides to introduce you to ZBrush 2019. Uh, so yeah, it's just outline all the different tools that I use, uh, how what I found uh, to be a good workflow for the different tools uh, when I was testing Zebras 2019. Um, and for the productivity boost, and this is the one that I was talking about earlier on, and I just kind of like give you an insight of how uh, I use Simodela. So again, this is a very relatively complex shape with loops and holes and, and crevices and, and all that for the Siri Mesha, but uh, it handles it pretty well. So I also go ahead and I just give you some some background about the, you know, the more technical aspect of the camera, the new universal camera, and you can use it. Anyway, it's all there. I just wanted to make sure that you guys know that it's in there, in, and if you wanna go through it, uh, feel free to do so. Cool, all right guys, so thank you so much again. Always a pleasure to hang around with you guys in here, and I'll see you next week. See you guys.